If you are looking for a stock Cubase plugin that will do chorus modulation effects, doubling effects, and act as a stereo widener, then Cloner is the plugin for you. Cloner allows you to take a sound and create up to four duplicate voices of that sound, which it then applies detuning and delay in order to create a chorus modulation effect. In this video, we'll take a look at Cloner and the parameters that are available within it. Then at the end, I'll show you how you can use it to set up a vocal doubler effect in an existing project that you have. Let's get started with looking at Cloner. At the top of this plugin is a visual representation of its output in the stereo field from left to right. Any voices that are active will be represented as a white line and then labeled V1, V2, V3, or V4. This blue wedge represents the spatial parameter as we have it set below, reflecting the stereo width of the plugin's output. Below the visual representation is the voices section. Starting here on the left of this section is where you determine the number of voices generated by this plugin. You can have up to four, and to make changes to this, you just click and then drag down to your desired number of voices. You may have noticed as we activated voices here, they were reflected visually above as white lines were introduced in our spatial width here. You might also have noticed that as we activated an additional voice, another module here opened up, voice one, voice two, voice three, and voice four. Within each of those modules, we have the ability to set the amount of detune and delay being applied to that specific voice. If I wanted to change the amount of detune being applied to voice one, I would come over to this section and then simply click and drag, detune, up and down. You can also click anywhere within the bar. Or alternatively, double click up here at the number and input a numeric value that you desire. One thing to know about the detune is that it goes from negative 100 to 100%, with zero lying in the middle here. If you wanted to adjust the delay for voice number one, you would stay in the section here. And similarly, click and drag up and down, click anywhere within the bar, or double click up at this number and input a new numeric value. One thing to know about delay is that it goes from zero to 100 with 0% being here and 100% delay above. Now, if you wanted to change the detune and delay of voice two, you would move to this section here and click and drag and make changes as you like and repeat the process for voice three and voice four. Below the voices section are the global settings for this plugin. Any changes you make to the parameters down here in this global settings section will affect all of the voices you have active. With the settings I currently have, any changes I make to one of these knobs and buttons will affect all four of my voices. Let's start by looking at the detune in the global settings. When this knob is turned to 0%, you're telling the plugin you don't want any detune for any of your voices. So it treats these all as if they're set to zero. When you introduce 100% of the detune, you're telling the plugin, I want 100% of the detune as I've selected above. There are two tiny buttons below the detune, the natural and the static. Now this natural button is actually the detune mode. And if you hover over, it'll tell you as much. When it's active, it's gonna have a more natural sounding algorithm applied to your detuning. When it's inactive, it's going to have a unnatural type of sound. So something more artificial and robotic. To the right of this natural button is the static button. And when this is activated, you're telling Cloner, I've already set the amount of detune that I want. I don't want any changes. I want that to remain the same and constant for as long as this plugin is active. Now you might notice that there's a faint line connecting the static button here with this humanized knob. And that's because these two interact in a way. What I mean by that is when static is active, this humanized button is not doing anything to the sound coming out of Cloner. 100% there's gonna be nothing because we're telling this plugin we want it to be a constant amount of detune applied to these voices. Now, when you turn static detune off, that's when this humanized parameter starts to affect your sound. The humanization is going to introduce variations and modulation to the amount of detune. Moving on from this detune section, we have a spatial knob, which allows us to determine the stereo width of the plugin's output. 100% would make it wider, 
and then going to 0% would become more mono. And you probably see that reflected up above in the visual representation of this plugin. The spatial parameter, it also changes where each of the voices fall in our stereo spectrum, right? Like if you just watch voice one, it's here now, but it'll end up all the way panned hard left if we go to 100%. Next to the spatial knob is the mix knob, which allows us to balance the processed and unprocessed signal with each other here. 100% wet means that we're only going to hear the plug-in. We're not going to hear any of the original signal. 0% dry, we're only going to hear the original signal and we will hear none of the plug-in. The output allows us to take away or add gain to the plug-in's output. I've noticed sometimes when I've used this plug-in, it'll make the sound louder to the point where it might clip on the output of the plug-in. So I'll take some gain away and basically trim off of the output here. Next to our output is a delay section. So we're just gonna jump over here and these all work together for delay in a similar way that these knobs and buttons over here all work together for detune. So for delay, this knob here, when it's set to zero, we're saying we don't want any delay for any of the voices. It's as if these are all set to zero. When it's set to 100%, we're telling the plugin we want 100% of the delay as we've determined it up above. When the static button is activated, we're telling the plugin we set the amount of delay and we don't want any variances in the amount of delay. It's going to remain constant throughout the performance of our source sound. Again, there is a faint line here connecting the static button to the humanized knob. And when static is active here, that means this humanized knob is not doing anything no matter where it's set. Once we deactivate the static delay, Humanize will start to come into play for the output of this sound. Now that we've taken a tour of Cloner, let's use Cloner to create a vocal doubler track. All you're gonna need is a vocal, and I've got a sample here off of Splice, so let's get right into it. Step one would be to right-click within your project window and create an effect track. Now in effect, Make sure Cloner is selected. If it's not, click the drop down and then type in Cloner. Configuration Stereo, Audio Output Stereo, and let's name this Cloner. And since we selected it as the effect when we're creating the effect track, it pops right up for us. Now I have a preset ready to go for a vocal doubler, so I'm gonna load that up here. Feel free to copy these settings. They're a pretty decent place to start. Once you have your effects track created with Cloner as an insert on the effect track, you would go to the track that you want to send through Cloner. So for me, that's this vocal here. And I would go to Edit Channel Settings. I would go to Sends, click this drop down, and I would select Cloner. Last thing to do is to activate the send by clicking this power button here. Now that we have Cloner set up as a vocal doubler here, I'm gonna mute it so we can listen to what the vocal track sounds like without the send active. I slow the whole world down for you. If you want, if you want me to. I'll make it all, all up to you. If you want, if you want me to. All right, now I'm going to unmute the cloner effect track and let it play for you so you can hear that original dry signal with the process signal of cloner going at the same time. I slow the whole world down for you If you want, if you want me to I'll make it all, all up to you If you want, if you want me to and there you have it. We've created a vocal doubler in Cubase using Cloner and an existing vocal track. Now some next steps from here, you might wanna pull back the fader a little bit and blend this wet signal back behind the dry signal so that main vocal's still in the middle and the doubles are being felt, but they're not so in your face the whole time. And that's all I have for you with Cloner today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have an ongoing series where I cover the stock plugins that come with Cubase, so there are some already on my channel and I'll have more for you in the future as well.